Hey guys, and welcome back for another episode. Today we're going to be tackling a game that is sure to please a lot of our inner child's dreams. We are going to be saving Gotham in the adventures of Batman and Robin for Super Nintendo. This is a game that has gotten quite expensive over the years, and as with most cases, the box can push things into an area that most would consider crazy. I vividly remember watching my older brother and his friends trying to beat this game when we would rent it from Hollywood Video. The sounds, the visuals, plus the impressive frames of animation really entice you to see this adventure all the way through. We get to see a whole lot of bad guys and sceneries from the show, and there's a whole lot of game to tackle, so let's get right to it. At the beginning of every level, you have a cool intro card, just like the episodes, which is a nice touch and foreshadows which of the famous enemies you will be dealing with. Things start out simple enough in the streets where you can beat up some thugs. Combat is simple enough as well, and standard. You can punch, duck and kick, along with a jump kick. You can also use your little accessories, which you'll see as we go on. You can block with L and R together, but you take damage during this too, so you'll find yourself never doing it, and it makes more sense just to be aggressive during your openings. Before long, you will see a carnival in the background and talk to Harley Quinn, as you descend into the Joker's current hiding area. This is where you also have some moving pieces and obstacles that will make you realize that you either need a wall jump or use your grappling hook to advance. Your first mini-boss is a giant toy soldier that is pretty simple that looks cool and sounds cool as well, with a pretty easy pattern to jump up and kick him in the face while avoiding the falling sparks. The next part of the level is absolutely amazing on a visual and audio front. Everything comes together beautifully as you await to see what could be next for you in this roller coaster challenge. There are little bombs on parachutes that you have to punch or kick or avoid, and some loops that can catch you by surprise if you didn't realize those white lights or whatever can cause damage and easily knock you off. The level continues to get better and more exciting as you come side to side with Joker and jab his bombs back at him with proper timing. It's really impressive looking, and again, I'm a big fan of how this whole first level came together. If you are knocked off or killed though, you do have to start the section over again, and if you get a game over, you have to go back to the beginning of the level. And this is only the beginning, unfortunately, of Batman wearing you down with brutally long time between checkpoints. Several minutes of replay is not uncommon, and for this section, I guess I don't mind horribly since it's so cool, but definitely something to keep in mind for later in the video. The fight with the Joker is sweet since you're finally both on the same coaster, but it's kind of a lot of the same with you walking back and forth to duck and kick. What's really stupid is that the lights can still harm you during this fight, but not him. Which doesn't make any sense. Next level you're up against Poison Ivy and you have to make it through the woods. Not sure if this is all of a sudden a stealth mission or pacifist type thing, but you can only throw batarangs instead of punching now. Is this because they are girls? I just don't get it. Is Batman sexist and doesn't believe a female villain also deserves a punch to the face? I just don't get why the changeup was made. You can still get up close to pick them up, but they immediately kick off of you, which I made sure to use this by ledges to get sweet revenge on them and to end their life in one way or another. Just like typical Batman, it's not all about your brawn, but your brains have to be about you too, as you use your grappling hook to make it through these tree branches, and it can be a little confusing on where to go at first, but if you're looking around and use your tools, it's not that bad. At some point you do have certain trees that just so happen to be falling while you're on them, so you've got to move past these without hesitation. After a few more villains and spike pits, you confront Ivy to fight her and her giant plant. So the idea here is to hit this thing when its mouth is open in order to cause damage. As the fight goes on, the plant starts to throw projectiles from its whip that can be avoided with some careful movement and a time jump. Sometimes Ivy steps out to shoot her little arrows at you, but the way to win is by throwing a crap ton of batarangs at the plant. Needs to be mentioned again, getting sent back to the beginning of these long ass levels just sucks and it does not make this more fun. Next level's a bit different. The pace is slowed down to be more of a search and rescue type of deal. This is the only time you see Robin, and it's weird to see him here because he should have been an optional second player from the start as the box art depicted. I remember all of us being so disappointed as we set down the second controller when we realized that the name Batman and Robin, plus its picture on the front, with both ready to fight some bad guys, is just a crock of shit to help with sales. This section is pretty tedious since there are five people to find from the start, but the fact is if you're an adult that pays attention and knows how to read, it definitely helps not make this take forever. You have three floors with two segments, A and B, on each floor, and you have to check in and out of the rooms in order to find these people. As you progress through them all, Robin is attacked by the penguin and you need to go check it out. Then you need to go rescue the curator, and finally you are pointed in the direction of the penguin. You have to fight his vulture first, which isn't actually that bad at all if you bait him to die before attacking. You finally square off on the rooftop with a helicopter that will pump rounds of bullets your way that can be jumped over if timed properly. Fighting him may be awkward at first since you can't duck his cane attack, but as long as you make sure you're hurting him at the same time, you should be able to end his life before he ends yours. Alright, so we've come to Catwoman next. The setting here is pretty cool actually, as you can see Catwoman in the background as you climb and move between the buildings. 
Really cool moment for the attention to detail here where her cat notices Batman in the elevator before she does and after a little dialogue, you two are in your first fight. Using the Batarang to stun helps with a lot of bosses and she's one of them. The next part of the fight is falling between buildings as you need to avoid her dives and hit her during the openings. Before long, you need to use your grappling hook to save yourself, which is a pretty cool touch but can be frustrating of course if you get sent all the way back to the beginning for something stupid like this. It's pretty cool to watch yourself chasing her over the rooftops, and it's another really neat setting clearly inspired from the show. If you can keep up and not fall to your doom, you eventually square off with her in an alley one last time. Her theme sounds really cool here and adds to the fight for sure, but as usual, just using the Batarang and staying out of trouble is the way to take her out. Okay, so now we need to catch up with Two-Face after his crime and what better way than with the Batmobile. The level is pretty basic, but a nice change up as you need to just avoid the cars and not make many mistakes with the time limit. You can shoot at the cars, but it's definitely easier and faster just to avoid them. The turns are awkward since they're so wide, meaning you definitely want to be in the outermost lane to have enough room for these. By the end, we just need to shoot a bunch of shots at Two-Face's car, and it's not too hard actually. You just need to be careful for when he hits his brakes to get you in front for his attacks, but if you just press on and off on the gas while constantly tapping on your shot button, he will eventually be done for. Alright, so we're already in the last few levels here, and this one has the Scarecrow where he uses his evil mind controlling gas on people to make the level more difficult. In dialogue, it's mentioned that he knows Batman would never harm an innocent person if they were acting against their will, so of course this means none of your attacks work on these annoying people that hold you in place for the other enemies to attack. I just kinda question Batman's rigid morality at this point, like, first he won't punch an evil girl in the face, and now he won't even use any force to get people out of his way to save the city. Like, I'm not saying these people all deserve to get killed, but it's a matter of saving a city and all you need to do is get over punching an innocent person in the face. I'd say that's an easy call to make. You want to equip your mask in order to not take damage from the visible gas, while jumping over the people you can't hurt versus beating the shit out of the ones that you can. This section is far from the hardest part though. After a quick ride with Robin, past some little balloons to get up to this blimp, you just have to beat up a few people, and this is where things get frustrating. This is definitely one of the most agonizing parts in the game. This is where you need to master the fragile art of using your grappling hook in a way that's never seen in the shows or movies. You need to achieve a rhythm of shoot, swing, jump, retrieve, shoot, swing, jump, retrieve, and it's all over this bottomless pit, and I gotta say, this is just some fucking bullshit, like the whole scope of this is just stupid. Why is boarding a blimp the hardest thing you've done up until this point? You're Batman, you're supposed to make swift and smooth entrances with your grappling hook. Do you ever remember him using it to swing like he's fucking George of the Jungle though? Obviously not, so what the hell is going on here? This is where the checkpoints and live system absolutely can make you want to take this expensive game and throw it out the window, since you'll have to replay this level over and over until you finally get back to this tense moment where you need to execute this flawlessly. Inside the blimp, you have some really cool effects that I almost didn't notice. There's a loud crashing sound that is actually synced up with what you can see going on outside the windows. Now that's really interesting, man. I love that attention to detail, and it shows that there were definitely some people on board that cared to make this as immersive and look as cool as they could. But we still have a boss fight to worry about, and oh my god, dude, I just never want to see this section again. Scarecrow is fast with a quick shooting three-way gun, he's hard to reach, and the plane moving around can actually make it harder to reach him with your attacks too, depending on his height. And sure enough, once again, you're playing through this level from the beginning. Oh yeah, you need to go through it all again. Hope you nail the grappling hook part again, and take him out all with just a few lives. And if not, yep, back at the start. I was eventually able to cheese the shit out of him with a batarang throw, wait, and attack, rinse and repeat, for minutes dude, and it's hard to keep this fight under control since he can be slippery and sometimes avoid your attack, then he's back to jumping around with his shots and it can be hard to get him back in your pattern again. It's the safest way to get through this and not having to play this level again, because good lord. Second to last level here, and man, if I had a lot to say last level, that frustration was probably at a 4 or 5 out of 10 compared to this. But the more I think about talking about it, it just makes me more upset with how much time I wasted on this level, and once again, we have horrendous checkpoints and a long ass level to blame for it. The game itself is fun, but this shit was not. I can absolutely imagine how many kids grinded for weeks or months to finally get past Scarecrow, just to get here to realize this was it for them, because this level will absolutely want to make you give up, and it's just something that gets worse and worse as you go. So you start out in a maze, which just screams artificial difficulty and time waste from the start. It didn't take long before I was just rolling through this whole thing as fast as I could avoiding the enemies because it's just such a waste of time. I have this maze memorized like the back of my hand now and honestly it'll probably stay that way for years. Not because the maze is so impossible and like I had to memorize it, but because it takes minutes and I had to get sent back here after one death, five to six minutes apart, for hours dude. I hate how much time I spent on this, it absolutely fucks up how I feel about the whole game. 
So the deal is, you need to get to these transporters, and you have to get to the right parts of the maze, which isn't too huge of an area, but it takes forever, and you need to use your x-ray glasses to help you see fake walls, and your bombs will blow it up. Pretty interesting concept for sure, and this is hinted at by Alfred, so once again, reading helps you out in this game. It even gets tricky by putting a transporter right in front of a fake wall, twice in a row! The riddles are pretty simple, like a curved line being the shortest distance between two spots on the planet since the Earth is round. There's a key box thing here that I don't totally understand, I just grab key C and then he tells me that I'm right and explains some kind of musical riddle that I don't remember hearing about ever. The last riddle was hard but for totally the wrong reasons. He's explaining an object with a million eyes, four lobes, no muscles, and two hemispheres. And since I took a lot of psychology courses in school, the lobes, hemispheres, and no muscles, that verbiage made me immediately think about the brain and I was ready to type in the brain, but there's only two letters. And if you type in the wrong letters, you go back to the waste area which is right next to the beginning of the level. So it's HB for human brain. Got it. For fuck's sake, you're in the middle of a map shaped like a question mark and I wish I could say this was the end of the level, but this fight is the least of our problems. The Minotaur is strong but slow so you can play around and wall jump to get over its head and I've been through this part at least 20 times at this point. So now we fall into some kind of Riddler Twilight Zone. And this is where the lives and continue system really, really lacks refinement. It's easy enough to roll past these statues and the chessboard has a cool effect, portraying depth of our environment and eventually the Riddler appears. And this right here is where a giant meaty log hits the fan dude and sprays all over your face. This game has a password feature, but it only saves you the amount of lives and continues you make it to the level with and won't give you a new one. What this means is, for over an hour and a half, I was going through the entire maze, making it through the Minotaur fight, and then this would happen. Or this. Or this. Or that. Or this. Any of these things, dude. And that was it. Back to the fucking beginning of this long ass level, just for one little bullshit fall with horrible detection. I seriously felt a tumor growing in my brain as I suppressed the anger from all of this. What kind of fun did they think this would be? It's total horseshit and a complete waste of time. The fight itself and challenge itself, it doesn't have to be that hard, but the fact is one little mistake meant at least five more wasted minutes, and that's with me rolling past everything, every single time and it was straight hell. I even went to sleep last night with the pressure of having to get through this in the morning, and dude, I finally did. So you just have two chess pieces that you kick while they're in the air, and you don't just take damage if they land on you, you are fucking dead and back at the beginning of the maze again. Once one finally blows up, you think you can focus on that one, and then, holy shit, you've got to use the chess piece to wall jump off without making a single mistake. For minutes, dude. Minutes. Unless you want to roll around in the maze again, let me say, getting through this was a major relief, and I hate how much this totally killed my momentum for appreciating this game, but whatever. Riddler can just sit there and airstroke his two dicks. We're moving on to the final level, and I'll try to be as fair to this game as a whole as I can. Finally, we're at the gauntlet, and this is where we get to face off everybody. This is what we've been reaching for. So you fight a bunch of bosses, but this time it's all with one life bar. At least we're fighting and not stuck in a maze, but there is definitely some challenge here again. So we start out with Penguin, and best strategy for him is to get close for three hits until he falls, back up, do it again, and after a few times he will fly, so get out of the way, and then do it again until he's done. Scarecrow is back, and the Batarang followed with a delayed reaching kick is the best way you need to take him out. Which is tedious and can take a while, but that's how it's done. So then we have a new fight, Clayface, who sucks at first, but after adapting to see we can get close to deliver some punishment while avoiding his attacks, then getting out of the way for when he rolls around, is how you make it through this. After a climb and a little heart, we get to abuse the Batarang and Jump Kick strat on Catwoman again. For attacking, you do want to specifically use the Jump Kick, because that's what results in a knockdown, and that's how you keep this fight under control. The next fight is another new one, against Man Bat, and it's an interesting one, where you need to use timed punches when he's coming and going in multiple angles. Which is a cool idea, since it's not just a side to side fight. It can be pretty frustrating, but overall, this is what you gotta do. Alright, so finally, now we have Harley Quinn introducing the Joker in a jetpack, which I'm sure would be a nightmare if you didn't just cheese him properly. I found a lot of success with a retreating air kick over and over and over, until he finally fights you on the ground, and I absolutely took out my anger from the adventure on him here. Constant roll throws, and I beat his ass with the Batarang as well. Gotham has been saved, only at the cost of my sanity. There are some lengthy credits that treat you to some cool visuals and music again, and that's all she wrote on this one. Wow, so that's Batman and Robin for the Super Nintendo. This playthrough is definitely harder than I expected, and not for the right reasons. It's uh, all because you have to go back so far if you died in certain points, and that's just a total waste of time. But I did love the graphics, I did love the sound, I tried to really point that out, that I did appreciate the things that the game was doing, but the lives and continue system, it sucked. But 
overall, it's been a fun day one of week two. Hope you guys enjoyed seeing this rare game played through. And I look forward to seeing you very soon for day two. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and hopefully share this with your friends if they also want to see just a beatdown of games five days a week. As always, stay safe, and I hope you have a great day. Thanks again.